Game dev is hard. Really, I mean it. All the things you have to learn, the sheer amount of work needed to create a game, the art, the sounds, the mechanics, and now the huge competition. Make it, in my opinion, one of the hardest things to undertake. In my previous video, go watch it if you didn't already, I talked about how it has never been easier to do game dev, and in this one, I'll show you the other side of the coin. Before that, a quick word from our sponsor, Core. Core is a new game creation platform where anyone can create, share, and play PC games single and multiplayer. It's completely free, you can simply download Core to start creating your own game with no coding skills required. Core comes with thousands of free music, sound, and art assets, and a built-in multiplayer technology, all powered by Unreal Engine with high-quality AAA graphics. Core has everything you need to create games from scratch, like writing your game logic in Lua, making your own scripts and 3D models. You can create 3D single or multiplayer games faster than ever before. Look at these amazing games made in less than 30 days and these beautiful words created for a dead mouse music video in just 10 days. You can also make money with your games through the Core Perks program, which offers a 50% revenue shares for creators. Some core creators have been able to pay their bills, buy their dream cars and quit their day jobs with the help of the Perks program. Right now, Core is sponsoring the Global Game Jam Diversifier Challenge, called Core Exercise. Make your game using Core to win part of a $10,000 prize pool. This year's theme is Duality. Use Core to create an amazing game that fits the theme and submit your entry by January 30th. Use the links in the description to learn more about the event and download Core for free. When you start game development or when you play games, you often come up with what you think are super cool ideas that would make the game amazing. We often see beginners starting game dev wanting to create huge open worlds, MMOs with procedural content, unique NPC with advanced AI, and blah blah blah. While it's super cool to dream big, the gap between idea and execution can be huge. It's easy to have what seems like cool ideas, but when it's time to build them, is where things fall off. When you have an idea, you don't necessarily think about all the details, the pitfalls, the pain points. The brain is good at making things look easy, when in reality, they're not. When you think about a cool idea for a game, you often forget all that needs to exist around that idea to make it viable. If you think of a cool mechanic, you probably didn't think of art, sounds, or even just distribution. We see a lot of games with cool ideas that have simply not been exploited correctly, or not shown in a way that makes players want to play. With time and experience, game dev can learn ways to assess if an idea is feasible or not, but it will come after many fails. I myself am guilty of thinking that something will be easy because I brush off the difficulties when imagining the idea, and I only see the end result. Bringing an idea to life is harder than we think. I believe that's why we often get the impression that AAA studios are not innovating that much, because they much prefer building on the ideas and foundations that they created over the years and make them more realistic or beautiful. It's very risky to bring new ideas to the public. The other thing that can be confusing when you start game dev is that it might seem easy, but behind the ease of use of the new tool lies a huge complexity. Behind simple ideas often lies a hidden complexity. Of course, some of the complexity of making games is simplified by the engines. As we saw in the previous video, they allow us to not care too much about the different kinds of GPUs gamers use, or what controller they have for example. But as you progress in game dev, and as your ideas get more complex, you face quirks and limitations of your engine. Not only that, but you also face the fact that making games is not just about coding a 2D character and playing three platforms here and there. Sure, your first first game will be just that, and for a start, that's amazing. But then you'll want more. Story, a cool art style, music, complex gameplay. The progression from your first game is simply not linear. The bigger you'll want to go, the more resources you'll need. To give you a sense of scale, GTA 5, released in 2013, has been estimated to have cost around $137 million just for the game, not counting marketing and other promotional stuff. Cyberpunk 2077 was developed during roughly 9 years, and the cost was estimated estimated to something between 120 to 314 million dollars. But that's nothing compared to Red Dead Redemption, with 8 years of development and an estimated cost of around 500 million, with potentially half of that for marketing only. Those costs are absolutely enormous, but don't worry too much for these companies, as they easily recoup these costs. Cyberpunk 2077 reportedly surpassed its development costs with the sales of the first day of release only. Of course, an indie developer simply cannot compete with that, and shouldn't, but it's a good idea to see what goes behind the hit titles of gaming. You also have to take into account the massive crunch that was required by those studios to achieve these enormous games in this time frame. 
Cyberpunk 2077 was especially guilty of that, but it's very common across the industry. So even if the biggest studios in the industry have to spend years with thousands of employees and multi-million dollars budget and still crunch to produce such games, it's a perfect example of how difficult it is to make games. Even with all of that, those games were not perfect and some of them were even full of bugs at release. And this is to be expected simply because games, no matter their scale, are very complex pieces of software that not only should work, but be fun, tell a story, and embark you in a different world. That's for big studios, but as a solo dev or a small team, you'll have to wear many hats, and this is also part of the hidden complexity. You don't necessarily know how to do programming, art, sounds, level design, etc., but you'll have to fill in the gaps in a way, whether it is by learning yourself or finding money and pay other people to do it for you. I talked about complexity in the sense that making games is a lot of different fields merged together and that the scale can be huge, but I'd like to give you a more concrete example that can really show you the depth of certain mundane things that you may not even think about as a gamer. To keep it short, the door problem aims to show that adding simple doors in your game can be a tremendously complex task. If there's a door in your game, can the player open it? Can the player open all the doors or some of them are just decoration? How the player will know the difference? Will you change the color of the door, make it unaccessible or simply lock it? Can doors be locked and unlocked, etc. The list goes on for quite a while and this is just to talk about the gameplay side of things. The article also goes to show how the door problem will involve the different roles of a big company. If you're interested, I've linked an article in the description. As we saw, the technical complexity is huge. Huge. But it's not only the limiting factor, in fact, making games is more than just making games. It might sound weird, but it's true. It is for all games, and especially for indie titles and game made by solo devs trying to do all by themselves. We talked about it briefly in the hidden complexity behind games, but as an indie, you'll have to wear many hats. You'll have to make a game, of course, which involves programming, sound effects, music, art, and much more. Even if you don't do it all yourself, you'll have to think about what you need, work with other people, pay them, etc. This is already a very complex task, but it's not the only thing you have to do. As a solo dev, you're an entrepreneur. So, you have to keep track of your finances, the cost of your game, the release, the different platforms you want to support, and of course, all the communication and marketing. You need to talk about your game, show it to people, creators, go to events to showcase it. It's a lot of work, and I personally think we can say that it's not a job, or even multiple ones, on top of creating the game. A job that you have to do, otherwise, no one will hear about your game. This is where a lot of indie devs lose it, because they don't understand how to do it all, or simply don't have the workforce for it. Even if you take care of everything. Events going around the world can have a huge impact. <coughs> Pandemic. And this is something that is simply impossible to predict. It might be a boost for certain games, but a terrible hit for others. What I've just described is especially true for solo devs and small studios, but everything still holds true for bigger ones. A game is a lot of things combined. When it's done just right, it's a flawless and amazing experience for the player. But this is not a foregone conclusion. Making games is a lot of complexity as we discussed, because it must be adapted to many platforms, work well with different hardware and computing capabilities. For online multiplayers, you have to constantly chase the cheaters, maintain the servers and fix bugs. To reach a global success, you must translate and adapt your game, which can be very difficult across different cultures. You start to get the idea of why making games can be such a hard discipline. It's a complicated craft that requires experience, time, effort, and money. You might put all of your energy and love into your game, but you're not alone on the market, and it can be extremely hard to get noticed. In the previous video, I talked about how easy it was nowadays to distribute your games online, and of course, this has a cost, and can be pretty hard to pay as an indie. The market is literally flooded with games. Just to give you some perspective, this is the number of games released per year on Steam. For 2020, it corresponds to 28 games per day, that's a lot. But it's nothing compared to mobile, which is probably one of the easiest platforms to distribute on, especially for Android. On consoles, the numbers are smaller, and it's easy to understand, they are much harder to access, both from a technical standpoint, but also simply because they restrict the number of games that can be published by reviewing the games before they are accepted on the platform. Of course, most of these games will go unknown, and probably because a lot of them are simply not good or not worth the money they are asking for. Still, this is something to consider when making games, and it means that you'll have to find ways to get your game known, whether you make a masterpiece that sells itself, or you reach streamers, journalists, YouTubers, or you pay ads to get your games known. You'll have to put in a considerable amount of work to get your game noticed. 
When talking about competition, it's important to remind us that the player's time is limited. What does this have to do with competition, you may ask? Well, you, as a game developer, will be in competition with other indies and huge studios for players' time. A lot of gamers already have a huge back catalogue of games and don't find the time to play. Why should they spend time on your tiny unknown game when they can play a much more well-known one like Forza, Valorant or Warzone? Sure, the game might be boring after a while and maybe it lacks some innovation that can be found in indie titles, but at least the player knows what to expect. As humans, we are programmed for risk aversion, we seek comfort, and this is one of the reasons why so many people stick to the same game over and over. And don't get me started with subscriptions like Game Pass that gives you access to tons of games for a low monthly fee. This means you have to find ways to convince your players that your game is worth their money, but most importantly, their time. I want to conclude on the two videos I made. I truly believe that game dev has never been easier, but also that it's a very difficult field to work in. Emphasis on work here. As we saw in the first video, all the tools and the knowledge is out there. And if you want to get started, go for it. I truly believe anyone can learn, at their own pace of course. It's solely possible to create cool and small games that you and others can enjoy. The real trouble begins when you want to take that a step further and you want it to become a career. Whether you want to go indie, alone, in a small team or in a AAA studio, you will be faced with all the complexity that we've talked about. Crunch, the lack of money or motivation, the sheer amount of work required to put something out there and then show to the world. It is an incredible hard task that most indies and even bigger studios will fail at. All of that should not discourage you, but it's important to see both sides of the coin. Game dev is a dream for a lot of people and you don't want that to turn into a nightmare. The best way to avoid that is to be aware of what it really takes to be in the industry. It's also important to understand that we all have a job to do to make it a better place. We've seen some bad things happen over the years in certain studios that I won't mention here. If we want to keep making games that people enjoy and will happily pay for, we must first respect the work and the people doing it. I hope you guys enjoyed this second part of the video, I hope it brought the needed balance to the whole conversation. Don't forget to check Core and the Global Game Jam Core Diversifier Challenge, there's a $10,000 prize pool, use the links in the description to learn more. If you enjoyed it, please consider dropping a like and subscribing for more content. If you want to support me, you can wishlist Dashbong, the multiplayer game I'm working on. There's a demo coming soon, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching the video, I'll see you soon, and in the meantime, have a great day. Bye!